Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. And today we'll be looking at cross-site scripting as well as the importance of your cookie data. And if you're a web application owner, what can you do to prevent the document cookies that are stored inside your user's browser from being compromised, all right, or being forwarded to a hacker who managed to run a cross-site scripting inside your website? So today we're back here at Open Web Application Security Project WebCode. So WebCode is a vulnerable web application server in which we can try all our hacking techniques on and learn about how we can stop some of these attacks from happening. So of course, a big disclaimer before we go ahead with the tutorial is that hacking is illegal. All right. And you definitely want written explicit consent from the website owner or the application owner, or unless, of course, you're doing it as part of the bug bounty terms and conditions under those sites. So in this case right here, let us go ahead and get started with the tutorial. So right here, we have cross-site scripting. All right, on the left side, we have cross-site scripting, and we selected stage one, store cross-site scripting. And what is happening here, I can go ahead and select, say, Tom, okay, and I can log in as Tom. So I can go ahead and enter Tom as a login, and I can go to the top right corner, all right, and I can select web developer, and I can select the storage inspector. So right here, I can zoom a little more so that it is easier for you to see. And right here, we have the J session ID. And a lot of times, this J session ID is used to identify users specifically. And the whole idea of cookies came about whenever you are logging into a website and you have to enter your username and your password. And every time you'll go back to the website, you have to re-enter those values. And that can be very cumbersome. So what instead happened is that cookie was then invented to help mitigate the requirement to continuously re-enter your username as your password. So cookies will save a document into your browser so that whenever you reach the website again, all you got to do is to show that document and it will let you re-enter into the website without having to re-enter username and your password, which can be uh, very troublesome. So right here, okay, what we can do is that hackers will definitely want to go after your cookies. Because once they have access to your cookie, they could possibly log in as you, all right? And if they can log in as you, they will then be able to masquerade as you, do bank transfers, gain direct access to your account without even having to know your password. So what is going to happen here is I can go ahead and click View Profile, all right? And we can see that the user data is right here. And I can do the following. I can click Edit Profile. And over here, I've actually entered and changed the street, all right? So you can enter certain values into different rows and columns that will then get saved into the database system. So in this case, okay, what we can do is enter script, document, all right, and dot cookie, all right, followed by closing of script and see what happens here. And of course, I can use the alert function to help us flag out, okay, the document cookie. And once I go ahead and click update profile, which will reload the page, immediately we get the following, all right, J session ID. So we managed to see the cookies. So what exactly is happening here is that the script, all right, a script inside the website is actually calling to display our cookie, which is a little strange if you start to think about it, all right, because why would a script need to open up and look at your Look at your cookies, right? So that could be an indicator of attack, all right? And of course, indicator of attack against the user and an indicator of compromise on the website, okay? So once I go ahead and click OK on this, so what we can do now is how can we demonstrate sending the cookie over into a malicious website or malicious server that is waiting for the cookies to come in, all right? So what I can do here is I've already created Okay, the payload for you. So I can copy this and I'll describe to you what it all means here. So I can select edit profile. Okay, so I go back cross site scripting, start cross site scripting, select Tom and log in as Tom, click view profile. Okay, and I can click edit profile and I can change the following values. So what I'm doing here is a new image dot source. And we're taking the following. All right, so this is the IP address of the hackers machine. And in our case, we will be using Kyle Linux to launch the attack, followed by the port number, all right, followed by hacked.php and output. All right, so we are sending the document.cookie over into this server. So I'll click update profile now, okay? All right, so I can go back to cross site scripting, start cross site scripting, login as Tom, 
Okay, I'll log in on this. All right, so we have already posted the data over into the database through the web application server. So if I go to Colleagues right now, all I got to do is enter the following. All right, Netcat. So I'm using Netcat to start up. All right, and on port 4444. All right, so go ahead, hit enter on this. So once I click View Profile, all right, the information gets loaded. So when I go back to Kali Linux, we can see the following data. Get, and we have the J session ID. So what is happening right here is that if someone else was to view Tom's profile, let's say it is the HR, human resource, or the administrator, decide to view the profiles, do some cleaning up of the identities of users, immediately the cookie of that admin or the human resource user would have the cookie sent over to the hacker, and the hacker could copy and paste, or right, update it onto their storage and they can use their browser and log into the site and immediately they will gain access into the site as you've seen from many of the tutorials here so again it's not just document.cookie but it could be many different kind of data that could be sent over forwarded over to the hackers server so then the question is how can we mitigate all right how can we add layers of security to protect ourselves against such attacks where the hackers would be able to pull all those cookies information so going back to cross-site scripting all right, going back to cross-site scripting. And I can select the following, HTTP only. All right, so let me explain to you what is going on here. So this is a very important parameter that we can set, right? An attribute, a cookie attribute entitled HTTP only. So that when the cookie is actually sent over into the browser, all right, it does not allow, it would not allow the scripts on the browser all right, to be able to actually pull out the document.cookie. So now I select, okay, do you wish to turn HTTP only on? I selected no. And when I click read cookie, it states the following, right? So let me copy this so that it is easier for you to see, okay? So over here, we have the cookies. So we have a unique to you, all right? So this is unique to the user. And we have the J session ID and so on. And what I can do now is to click yes okay i'll click yes okay and right now i'll go ahead and click read cookie and you see the discrepancy so i'll go ahead and copy this and paste it onto notepad plus plus so that it's easier for you to do the comparison so right here you can see that there is a missing cookie from the second one all right so the unique to you is now no longer being displayed which means that if the hacker managed to write a cross-site scripting to pull out a document.cookie the unique to you all right that has http only will not be readable or accessible by the browser so that's the whole idea so that the scripts that are running inside the browser will not be able to view your cookie data all right so if i go to the further explanation here under open web application security project you want to declare all right especially when all these cookies are used for authenticating users into the website so right here you can set the following all right you can set the following as http dash only all right, and true. So whenever you're setting cookies for the users on your on your website, all right, remember to set this forward so that you'll be able to prevent all right those sensitive data, cookies information from being forwarded possibly to the hacker server. All right. So once again, I hope you've learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. You'll like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.